Hey guys, Preston here. Welcome back to Geek and Seek. And on today's episode of our new deck tech series, I'm going to be going over my deck that I built for a Modern Horizons 3 gameplay video. If you want to go watch that game before looking at the deck tech, you can see it down below in the description. My deck is called Green Mean Cheat Machine, and it's led by Eladarmi Corvactyl. It is for one and two green, a legendary creature elf warrior. He's a 3-3. Three, three. He says, you may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may cast creature spells from the top of your library. And the big spicy part of the card is pay one green, tap him. Then tap two untapped creatures you control. Reveal a card from your hand or the top of your library. If you reveal a creature card this way, put it onto the battlefield. Activate only during your turn. So this deck is big green creatures that you want to cheat out as early as possible. So you play some small green creatures to help Eladrami do his ability. Really get the gas going as soon as you can. So there's a little bit of ramp. Uh, there's a little bit of protection for your scary stuff. There's a little bit of protection for you. And uh, it's a pretty fun deck if I do say so myself. All right, so when you're starting off with the deck, you want to have a couple little creatures that are good to help Eladrami do his ability, but obviously you want him to be able to do some other stuff and have some interesting effects outside of just helping Eladomri. So first up, we have Kyrion Ranger. It costs one green, it's a one one elf ranger. Return a force you control to its owner's hand, untap target creature, activate only once each turn. This is a great ability. It lets you do Eladrami twice in one turn if you have enough creatures. It doesn't take a lot when his ability is that busted to really make this useful. Another good early game creature is Fanatic of Ronas. It's a 1-4 that costs one and a green. Uh, you tap him to add one green mana to your pool, but he also has Ferocious. Tapped add four green mana, but you can only do that if you have a creature with power four or greater. He also has Eternalize for two and two green. This will let him come back from the graveyard as a 4-4 black zombie creature token. Uh, so he'll be able to turn on his own Ferocious. One of maybe the best early game creatures for the deck is Scoot Swarm. Uh, if you've seen this card before, you know how crazy it gets. Getting a bunch of Scoot Swarm tokens out with your landfall triggers. It's a green deck. You're going to be playing a lot of lands. Uh, this will let you do Eladrama's ability really easily with those tokens. Because you don't care about one of them, really. It's when you have a bunch where they start being scary. So before you got the swarm ready, you can use them to help with Eladomri, which is really nice. So obviously, after you're done playing all the little creatures, you want to have some big scary haymakers to cheat out with Eladomri's ability. And some of the ones we have in this deck, pretty spicy. First up, we have Ulamog the Defiler for 10 generic mana. He's a 7-7 Eldrazi. When you cast a spell, uh, target opponent exiles half their library rounded up. Now the goal in this deck isn't to cast the big creatures, but if we need to, that is a nice ability there. He has Ward, sacrifice two permanents. Uh, he enters the battlefield with a number of plus one plus one counters on it, equal to the greatest mana value among cards in exile. Now, obviously, that's normally meant to be hitting things from his own cast trigger, but in a game of Commander, you know, You've got Swords to Plowshares flying around and other exile effects. So even if you don't get his cast ability, it's still still a good chance he's going to get a couple of counters on him. And finally, he has Annihilator X, where X is the number of plus one plus one counters on him. Even if you don't get the counters from his own ability, the green this deck has other ways of putting plus one plus one counters on your creatures. So you can still get that Annihilator going and it can get pretty big pretty fast. Another good big creature for the deck is Regal Force for four and three green mana. It's a five five, and when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card for each green creature you control. Now, assuming you're able to get out a bunch of those small creatures early on, this card can draw you a quarter of your deck in a single turn very easily. It's a very good draw spell in Commander regardless, but when you only have to pay one to get them out, that's really nice. And then finally, for our big creatures that I wanted to show you guys, we're going to be talking about Galta Stampede Tyrant. Five and three green for a 12-12 legendary creature Elder Dinosaur with Trample. And when he enters the battlefield, you put any number of creature cards from your hand onto the battlefield. So while it's nice to cheat out one big green haymaker with Eladomri, it's even better if you can dump out your entire hand of huge monsters. 
and uh yeah it's a good way to end the game i'll tell you that all right so this is a green deck obviously that means we're going to want to take advantage of green's ability to ramp really well so we do have a couple of traditional ramp spells such as explore and harrow this is pilgrimage but because of the nature of the deck we really want to take advantage of mana creatures so obviously the uh fanatic of ronis from earlier great card for ramping we have Secura Tribe Elder. You can use him to help with Eldarmer's ability and then sacrifice him to get a land when you're done. That's always really nice. And we have some extra land drops some stuff like Wayward Sword Tooth. Next up, we're going to talk about protection. And protection is really important in this deck because it's a scary deck. People are going to arch enemy you pretty quickly once you start doing your thing. So you're going to need protection and you're going to need two different types of protection. First, you need protection for yourself. And the two best cards in here for that are Spore Frog. He's a 1-1 one, one for one green. You can sacrifice him to bring all combat damage we dealt this turn. Uh, he's a little creature. You can play him early, help with Eladamra's ability. And when people start getting mad at you, you can sacrifice the frog to get yourself a turn. Another great card in the deck is Verdant Sun's Avatar for 5 and 2 green. It's a 5-5 dinosaur avatar. When it or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. So people are going to want to swing at you. You're going to be taking some damage in this game probably. You're going to want to gain life. And obviously the best way to do that is by playing giant creatures, which you want to do anyways. So after you're done making sure that you're safe, you want to make sure you can protect all your creatures. So we have cards like Averbrook Caretaker. It's a four and two green human werewolf creature token, four, four with hex proof. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you put two plus one plus one counters on another target creature you control. And then it has day bound and night bound. So if a player casts no spells during their turn, it becomes night the next turn. And when it's on its night bound side, it has hex proof. Other permanents you control have hex proof. It's a 6-6, six, six, and at the beginning of combat on your turn, you put two plus one plus one counters on each creature you control. This is going to keep all of your creatures safe, and it's going to make them huge, so you can start swinging in on all of your opponents. Next up, we of course have the classic Heroic Intervention for one and a green. Permanents you control gain Hexproof and Indestructible in the turn. This is maybe the best board or anti-board wipe card in the game that's in green. Keeps all of your creatures safe, it keeps your land safe. Artifacts and enchantments, we've got a couple of those in here. Keeps everything safe, can't be targeted, can't be destroyed. It's a good card. Next up, we have Eldrazi Monument. It's a five mana artifact. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and have flying and indestructible. But at the beginning of your upkeep, you have to sacrifice a creature. If you can't, you sacrifice Eldrazi Monument. Now that restriction usually isn't gonna be a problem for us, you know. We have some token generation in this deck. We have some low impact little creatures that we don't mind throwing away if we need to. Uh, the indestructible and the bonuses are nice. That extra plus one plus one damage and especially the flying. That's a good way to get over people's chump blockers. Uh, so yeah, it's a good card to end the game and it's a good card to make sure you don't get taken out of the game with a board wipe. And then finally for our protection package, we have Vigor. It's three and three green mana for a six six elemental incarnation with trample and it says if damage would be dealt to another creature you control prevent that damage put a plus one plus one count on it for each one damage prevented this way when vigor is put into a graveyard from anywhere you shuffle it back into your library so it gets around mill which is a nice little bonus but more importantly it makes it so that all of your other creatures are basically immune to damage whether that's combat damage, fighting, damage from red spells, it doesn't matter. Your creatures are not only going to not have that damage happen, really, they're going to be getting counters instead, which is going to build up very quickly. Finally, I wanted to go over a couple of the utility lands we run in the deck. First up, we have Field of the Dead. Uh, it ends the battlefield tapped, and it taps for a colorless mana, but whenever it or another land enters the battlefield under control, if you control seven or more lands with different names, you make a 2-2 black zombie creature token. This is a really good card. I'm not a big fan of it personally, but I wanted this deck to be pretty strong and be able to hold its own because I knew people were going to be a little scared of it. So might as well play some of those good cards if you're going to be targeted anyways. So yeah, it'll, it'll uh, 
make you a lot of tokens really fast in this deck. Next up we have Rogue's Passage. It's another colorless land uh, tapped for a colorless and uh, you can pay for it to tap it. Uh, target creature can't be blocked this turn. This card is really good at taking your biggest creature and making it so that can't be jump blocked, you know? That's one of the things that can sort of help people try to survive against this deck is jump blocking. So obviously stuff like trample and flying is nice, but you can still deal with chump blockers that way. This just shuts that off completely. Our final utility land I wanted to cover, and as one last piece of protection, we have Maze of Ith. Uh, this untapped target attacking creature prevent all combat damage that we built to and by that creature this turn. So if we need to, we can use it on an opponent's creature to keep our life total up, or we can protect one of our creatures if someone had a combat trick that we weren't expecting. Very good card defensive and offensively, and uh, just really good card to have in the deck. All right, so playing this deck, uh, it's very powerful and it's very much an arch enemy style deck. You are gonna pop off very quickly in most games and you're gonna really have a lot of people gunning for you in most of the time. Very rarely are you not gonna be the foot at the table with this deck. You're drawing a bunch of cards, you're playing big creatures, you're putting life photos down very quickly. So if you wanted to sort of change up this deck yourself, I'd recommend maybe toning the power level down and running some board wipes because in my version of the deck there aren't any. I wanted to just full gas to the pedal, go for the win as quickly as possible, really make this deck as strong as possible, and just sort of accept the fact that I'd be arch enemy. But if you wanted to build this deck, I'd probably recommend for most playgroups toning down that power adding in some board wipes, making it a bit of a more sustainable deck. If you guys are interested in this deck, you can find the list down in the description along with a link to the video so you can see it in action. I want to thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, go check out our other videos. I think they're all really great. If you're really interested, you can go check out our Patreon. Uh, it has a bonus video coming out here soon, a bonus episode of uh, Upkeep, that is. And uh, patrons get slightly early access to a lot of our videos, a day or two usually. Uh, if you guys are interested in that, that'd be cool. But if not, you want to just watch the videos, we appreciate that as well. Thanks guys for watching, supporting us. We really appreciate it from the bottom of our hearts and hope to see you again.